Hello and welcome to Elementary STEM with Miss Crosman. Today we are going to be building tinfoil boats. Now I was just out on my deck a few minutes ago filling a dishpan full of water and my son came out and it's a very hot day and he saw the dog outside and he said, oh, is that going to be Tessa's water bowl today? No, it's not. This is going to be my boat launching site. So for today's project, you are going to need some tinfoil, a couple 12 by 12 sheets and a bucket of water and some weights. I like to use these gemstones from the dollar store. However, marbles will work, coins, washers, whatever you have around the house that happens to have a little bit of weight to them. Now I do have one story to tell you about the tinfoil. Be careful what tinfoil you buy. If you have not seen my video about the five things as a STEM teacher I would never buy again, you might want to check that out. It involves tinfoil from Sam's Club because their tinfoil, any restaurant quality tinfoil, is going to be perforated. And the time I used perforated tinfoil in the classroom to make tinfoil boats was a hilarious disaster. So do not do that because the perforated tinfoil lets the water right through. All of our boats sank. So use just generic stuff that you get at the store instead. Now you're going to want about a 12 by 12 sheet. It's okay if it's not perfectly square and shape it into whatever shape you think will be able to hold weight and keep it floating. Now before you build your boat, you might want to become familiar with why boats float. Now boats float um, based on a principle we call the Archimedes principle. Archimedes was a Greek mathematician who lived over 2000 years ago. And what he said was that as you place an object in water, there is a buoyant force pressing up on it, helping it rise that equals the amount of gravity being pushed down on it. And this principle works as long as there is enough mass in your boat to displace the water, to push it aside, to allow your boat to float. Now what's gonna cause your boats to not float is if they start taking on water. You wanna be very careful when you're building them that around the edges, you have not left any gaps. So as I'm building mine, I really wanna make sure that I'm pressing the tin foil all the way around the edges and making sure there aren't any spots where I've allowed it to fold over and create a gap where water can get through and that's going to help it stay buoyant. I designed another one that's a little more like a barge, kind of looks like a cookie sheet and I've got this one that I'm going to try too and this one's tricky too to keep the waters out at the corners because I folded the tin foil over, kind of folded it in, folded it over and then I'm really pinching hard on the corners and hoping that the water does not leak through those edges. Now it's time to test my boats. Let's see how these do. All right, let's test my first boat. I'm gonna place this in water. And I'm gonna start putting gemstones in it and see how many gemstones my boat will support. I can see that it is starting to drop into the water level. I'm also seeing my boat is starting to tip on this side, so I'm going to put weight on the other side. Ooh, there's a huge gemstone. <gasps> and there it goes. <gasps> and there it goes. Now I'm going to test my second boat, but I always like a good challenge. So what I've done is I've poured my gemstones that the other boat held out on a towel, and I'm gonna use those first and see if this boat will hold even more than the last boat did. With these larger boats, I wanna be careful and really kind of space my weight out so that one corner doesn't dip down and start taking on water really fast. Now, if you're a teacher and thinking about doing this activity in your classroom, I would advise you to bring every beach towel you own to class that day because this does get very messy whether we're inside the classroom or outside. And remind students to push their sleeves up 
because they'll really get into the water. I'm staying out of the water, but they'll have a tendency to really get into it as they're testing over and over. Wow, I'm seeing that the bottom of my boat is starting, instead of being flat, it's starting to curve right down in the middle. But I'm almost out of gemstones. Ooh, but I'm, I look like I'm taking on water right there. You see that? Right here is my most vulnerable part of the boat. You can see the water line is right up to the edge of the boat. And there it goes. Now my end result was that my second boat did significantly better than my first one. It held double if not more gemstones. Um, I didn't actually count them because I was putting them in so fast with my first boat that I put in a whole handful and the boat sunk, so I didn't bother counting them. Also, my gemstones weren't uniform in size, so it wouldn't be an even comparison, but just visually, it looked like my second boat held double the amount. But I noticed that there were some flaws in my boat, and that's making me think I could redesign that second boat so that it's even better and give it another test, and I bet it would hold all of my gemstones. So that's my next plan. I would encourage you to keep changing your plans. Um, every time you test something, think of ways that you could improve it. Try it again. Keep redoing it until you can get your best possible results. Or if you've got some recycling around the house, take a look in there and see if there are things that you think might be particularly buoyant that you might be able to use to add to the tin foil and make an even better boat because I bet you could hold a lot of weight if you expanded the number of materials that you are using as well. So have fun with this one. It's always a favorite of ours.